feed is a piece, um, it's an excerpt from a series of language-based emojis that I've been writing. <laughs> um, and it's actually, it's related to the tattoo wish list piece that I wrote for Matt's show at Weekend Gallery that Jay and John ran. And so I was like, I'll put this together for this, because um, it'll be specifically directed, um, you know, for Matt. And now you can feel free to use these in any of your text conversations. <laughs> so this is, the title of the, the collection is The Limousine Service That Relies Solely on the Transportive Power of Whistling. <laughs> Duck with a dollar bill in its mouth. Gun snapping in half. Doorknob in mid-flight after falling off door, but growing wings so it can go anywhere. Open anything. Girl making half-moon slits in one of those big banners that advertise local events. Slits so the banner doesn't become a sail, and the wind can pass breezily, half-moonly through it. Embarrassed lake with helicopter hovering above. <laughs> the helicopter's a peeping tongue! <laughs> 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 now, do you know what the link is? <laughs> Sandwich with a big bite missing. Tree trunk axed across to reveal a hibernatingly smiling jokester of an otter. <laughs> Remote control smashed to pieces. Watermelon sliced open to reveal its seeds polka dotting the silhouette of baby's first lunar eclipse. <laughs> The thick fur of a typically predatory beast tickling you during a sudden, kind embrace. <laughs> Dapper Dowager trying to fold a queen-sized fitted sheet by herself. <laughs> Succulent in such close-up that it's just a blob of green. <laughs> Plus devastating hint of thorn. <laughs> A towel so saturated with moisture in spots that its fundamental color has changed. The tears of a child sobbing because he has been sent on an important errand by his parents, but when he goes to pay for the bouillon cubes, finds out he hasn't been given enough cash. The relationship between blinding and buildings, Roman. Um, this is a short piece called Pumpkin Treasure. I've lived most of my emotional life like fall just started. Like the imminence of death has just asserted itself into my awareness for the first time. That's why I love the first morning of autumn. You wake up and the air is crisp, thinner, with a sliver of death in it, and yet the sun is so bright it casts the most beautiful light on that invisible inevitability. And these next couple of pieces are excerpts from my conflict journal, which for some reason has been coming up, so I looked at it, and I was like, I'm going to write some of them up. Um, October 17th, 2008. Through an empty pack of cigarettes at some families holding up McCain signs at the intersection of Imperial Highway and Beach Boulevard, then said, John McCain raped my dog and Palin won't let her get an abortion. Explain that to your 10-year-old. July 13th, 2009. Haunt a hello slash fuck you triple beep while driving past a lame nighttime marketing event for people trying to sell condos down the street from my apartment. After I smell a fart, I don't yawn for days. <laughs> February 11th, 2012. I go to a show in an after hours place to see my friend's band play. The security guy won't let me take in my water bottle full of gin and tonic, even though their whole setup is illegal, so I hide it in the bushes, and I'm already a little ruffled. I tell the guy asking for money at the door that I'm on the list, and he sighs loudly and gives me a piece of paper and says, you're going to have to find it. I respond, why? Can't you read? He immediately tries to push me. He leans too far over and knocks into the table he's behind instead. Big clatter of cans and bottles falling to the ground ensues. 
I laugh. He comes around the table to altercate. My friends step between us. He asks, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? And I say real friendly, this is a party. <laughs> John, whose band we're there to see, comes out and asks what's going on. Door guy says, this guy's being a dick. And John says, Doug, this is my friend Andrew. <laughs> it doesn't count if you tell someone I love you, if you already know their middle name. Hashtag love enforcer. <laughs> um, so Matt and I have had a lot of conversations about really disliking uh, the cult of storytelling and the fawning over in every medium. Like, oh, I just love stories. But especially in writing, there seems to be this thing of like, that's the only thing that um, stories are good for, or that, that the medium is good for. Um, so, I know this is a reading, but so this last conflict, I'm just going to tell a story orally. Um, and telling it based on my memory as opposed to writing it down, uh, ma making it a, a telling rather than a reading, is like the relationship between um, preparing sushi, because that's still cooking. Some people don't like to think that that's cooking because there's no heat applied. But this is how I like my stories. Um, so... Uh, in the, so in the summer of, uh, well, after I moved, um, I was moving out of this apartment um, in college, and we had built a stage in this apartment, and we had covered every uh, wall with different things. So there were themed rooms in this apartment, because we used to host these performances, sort of like this, but we were fucking stupid. Um, and maps and shit were in one room, big collages everywhere, like cut around the light switches and the molding. It was every... Um, inch of the thing. So the landlord comes to me one day, about six weeks before we move, or we're supposed to move out, and he says, hey, if you take everything down, um, put all your stuff in the center of the room, of all these rooms, I'm going to give you your security deposit back. And I was like, that sounds great. Because we had fucked up this apartment quite a bit. We've lived there for like two years. It was messy. And so we move out, I go back, I'm just picking up the last little knickknacks, and Gary's there, and, um, and his helper is there, this, uh, you know, tall, big Native American dude. And I'm like, okay, hey Gary, I'm getting my shit. Um, we're going to get that security deposit, right? And he just looks at me and he says, you should have gotten that in writing. And I was like, what the fuck? Um, so... There's, you know, we talk about it a little bit, and I'm like, oh, this is not good. And I was like, I'm just, we're fucked. So I made this decision. We were in the third room. I was like, I was like, he, he's going to have to force me out. I'm going to make him, like, physically bring me out of this building. And so, and I was like, and while I'm doing that, I'm just going to hold all the spit in my mouth. And by the time we get to the end, I'm going to spit in this guy's fucking face. And... <clears throat> so we're talking, and he's like, you got, and then you, I mean, he did get aggressive. He was like, you got to leave, you know, this isn't your place anymore. Um, so I'm like, oh, yeah, but I'm just making sure it takes a long time. Because I had, like, looked at his helper guy, and the helper guy was, he was just like, he just shrugged when I was like, really, is this seriously what's going on, Gary? And so he starts pushing me out, pushing me out, and I'm arguing the whole way, and we get to the back door, and um, there's, like, three steps, and I'm on that ledge, and so I spit in this fucking guy's face, and it's like, it's a large amount. It takes about three, four minutes to get out. This is, this is in Chicago. So the apartments are long, um, and we were in the front room, and I was parked in the back. So, like, I had a good amount in my mouth. It was, I mean, he tried to breathe. I saw it go in his nose. It was all over his eyes and shit. It was bad. Also, the guy was a black belt in karate. I knew that. I knew I was going to get fucked up. So he grabbed my arm and put it behind my back and then grabbed me by the neck and put me in the dirt and just like me and me and, you know, be, trying to beat me up and shit. Eventually, um, I didn't fight back because I knew I was like, I, I knew I was fucked. Native American guy comes, gets him, pulls him off of me and uh, drive home, show my friend that I just moved into this apartment with. And they're like, oh man, you, you know, you have these like massive bruises on your neck and shit. Um, you should go file a police report. So I go and file a police report, 
And uh, the police are like, there's nothing you can do. You, like, spitting on someone is an assault. It, you're, you know, it doesn't matter. But they're like, we'll file it. So they file it. So it turns out Gary had some aggression issues in the past and had um, bad shit. And so he really needed this police report unfiled. So he offered to pay us the security deposit, <laughs> which he did do. And so I, we did get the security deposit back. And um, so sometimes if you spit on somebody, you'll get what you want. <laughs> And then, so I just have one more piece to read. <laughs> it is a reading. It is cooking. Um, it's called Not a Plot, a Pool Table. Not a Plot, a Pool Table. I jumped into the wall, took a bite with my teeth. Now I'm hanging from the wall from my teeth. <laughs> Bequeath weep. Bequeath weep. Bequeath weep. Breathe, feet. Breathe, feet. Freeze. Barbecue chicken is a vest. Hardly finger licking to be under arrest. Teeth in the wall, fingers in cuffs, gums glowing, iridescent folder all falls. Niagara, Viagra, wouldn't want to be ya. Onomatopoeia. Maybe I'll be able to. Maybe I'll be able to, maybe I'll be able to, maybe I'll be able to yabba dabba do, yabba dabba do, maybe I'll be able to, maybe I'll be able to, yabba dabba dabba do, yabba dabba dabba do, maybe I'll be able to, yabba dabba dabba do, maybe I'll be able to, maple wanna donut you, yabba dabba dabba do. Walnut, hut, hut, male privacy, thin paper. Male privacy being equal to thin paper softening the privacy, the coffee, the privacy of postal mail, thin paper softening from the coffee slopped. Into the saucer. Thanks, Open Press and Insert Bomb.